Lighten up, Francis. <laughs> I am inevitable. We're going to play football. Yippee! <laughs> You're listening to The Review on the OSG Podcasting Network. Hello, everybody. You are listening to The Review. John, um, are you there? Yes. Wilkie, you are there, too. Yes. You are listening to the OSG on CFB, college football, we are the online sports guys. He is OSG Nelson. He is Jay Wilkerson 16, and I am OSG Phil. We make up most of the online sports guys. Not all of us, but most of us. Um, and we're the guys who show up every week talking about the latest and greatest in college football, news, notes, nuggets, and things left unsaid. Really, there's not too much going on in college football right now. But then again, there's not really too much going on in the world. Guys... All of a sudden here, within the last week or so, with everything being shut down and things being backed up, shut down further and further out, there's some discussion now that could college football be next on that list of sports that say we're going to have to postpone the 2020 season? Well, can go for it because shaking my head doesn't necessarily translate to the audio version of the show. <laughs> Which way were you shaking your head? <laughs> Left and right. Well, I, was well, doing the, I, I was doing the windshield wiper routine. Okay, all right. We wanted to get a good visual for our audio partners out there. Thank you. Uh, I think it's way, 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 way too early uh, to have that kind of rejection for the college football season. Uh, we're in March. Uh, fall camp doesn't until the top of April or I'm sorry, the top of August um, I just think it's way too early to make such dire predictions when right now people are are, are gravitating to some positive news uh, some sense of normalcy um, and, and it just hasn't been there and now you hear Kurt Herbstreit say something to the, to the effect that he doesn't feel there's going to be a college football season at all and when you read some of the, the coaches and some of the ADs and some of the um, um, contingency plans that we're he- hearing right now, I'm not sure if that's a, the way to go now. With a, a sport and a, and a ritual, especially for us here in the Deep South, that uh, it's ingrained in our culture, I'm not sure if that's a good positive message you want to give out to people who are hurting right now or needing some kind of... Uh, but, John, is it realistic for them to at least have the conversation and put some contingency plans in place in case it ends up coming to that? Nothing wrong with a contingency plan, but I still think that, to Wilkie's point, you're too far away from it. Here's the context of uh, the conversation with Kirk Herbstreit. Came in from uh, what Mac Brown had said earlier this week, quote, There's a fear of would we have a season, would we have a partial season, what does a partial season mean? There's a great concern because of the remedy that comes in with football. The biggest problem is you're not sure when it ends, and we can't get those answers at this point. And then Kirk Herbstreet does a radio interview back on Thursday night, and he says, I'll be shocked if we have NFL football this fall. If we have college football, I'll be so surprised if that happens. And that, and this is the translation of the, uh, the the transcription of the quote from TMZ. Just because, from what I understand, people that I listen to, you're 12 to 18 months from a vaccine. I don't know how you let these guys go into locker rooms, let stadiums be filled up, how you can play ball. I just don't know how you can do it with the optics of it. So that's where Herb Street's coming from, with the conversations that he had uh, with radio and coming off of the Mac Brown quote. There's nothing wrong with a contingency plan, but to Wilkie's point, once again, we're not to April. That's in August, and I know it gets into the larger question, Wilkie, of the idea of doing things behind closed doors if it gets to that point because you have TV partners and contracts that you want to fulfill, and you want to have that product out there in some manner, way, shape, or form. But to the larger point, you know, Phil, it, to me, 
we're not to April yet, and it's an August discussion, but there's nothing wrong with contingency plans. I just think that you're too far away from having that kind of a discussion. And we're talking about a world where the Olympics of our the Olympics, which aren't much further distance wise away um, in Tokyo, they've already been postponed. If you think about it, that's that was slated to run the end of July, beginning of August, when college football practice season would be kicking into gear. And it's not, to me at least, unrealistic to say if I'm an athletic director or even a coach, that I start at least having the discussion about what I do if either A, my fall practice starts becoming interrupted, or B, I have to delay or postpone a season and lose a season because that's a realistic possibility in to sit and to stick your head in the sand and say, well, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen that so far away from now. Is that being naive and not really making a plan because that's part of the problem we've had to begin with in that this is so new to everybody and the way things are happening and reacting right now there are no contingency plans in place wilkie take it well again it's august it's september uh, you, you got to give this time you, you've got to you got to give somebody out there hope that of some kind of sense of normalcy and getting back to the college football season would be a sense of normalcy. The contingency plans I've seen out there are playing with limited fans, playing with. No doubt. No but doubt. But that's why you have to have the discussion now because there are multiple options, multiple ways you could proceed here. And even if you never have to put the plan in place, having the discussion now in throwing ideas um, in ways to go about it out there now and having that time to discuss it and be able to find have a plan ready to go to me is not an outrageous situation uh, not an outrageous request and doesn't seem outside the norm to me I and mean, it seems like something that would be natural to do there's nothing that says you have to do it but there's nothing wrong with being able to say hey, we're talking about what our options could be, what things could, how things could develop, and we've got X, Y, or Z plan ready to go in the event that we're not going to play. Yeah, Wilkie, take this one because, I mean, for me, quoting the great thespian Fred Dalton Thompson in the movie The Hunt for Red October, Russians don't take a dump, son, without a plan. Russians don't take a dump, son, without a plan. So for me, Wilkie, there's nothing wrong with having a plan. But to your point, I think it's way too early to sit there and come up with this scenario that nothing's going to happen in August and September. But you have to account for it. True. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you don't have to account for it. My larger point is just come up with a plan. Don't sit there and there's two, there's two streets here that you're looking at. Come up with a plan. Make sure the plan's implemented if it needs to be. Just make sure you've got one. I'm cool with that. But the notion of sitting here and already shutting something down, oh, I don't know if it's going to happen. I mean, why run that game right now when we're so many months ahead of where the schedule is, where practice can be, those kinds of things? That, to me, is the larger the larger point here. That's the separate lane of traffic. Deal with one lane of traffic at a time. Come up with the plan, but don't sit here and say that the end of the world or the end of the college football world is coming in August when we're not there yet. That, to me, is the, the larger point in all of this. Okay, well, I'll throw that one back at you and say, don't, you don't know, we don't know what's going to happen. No. How, if it, if it comes to that where we're still having this conversation in late July and nothing's been resolved, and nobody is able to um, go practice or start being organized or anything like that, is it too late to put that topic out there? Plus, the other part of this is you're dealing with um, hundreds upon thousands of sports writers with nothing to do other than to speculate and ask coaches and athletic directors, are they making those plans? Is there nothing wrong with having the conversation now? Because 
you got to come up with a viable option. And if you've got viable options, what are those viable options? Well, and that's the larger point. And I think that's a part of the grander plan. But like I said, I th- I'm, dealing with, I'm dealing with it as two separate lanes of traffic. Fine to have a plan. Fine to say we're coming up with a contingency plan, whatever that is. But at the same time, don't sit here in late March and have this you know, idea of, oh, no, we may not have college football now because I still think that you're too far away from saying no, but at the same time have a plan. I'm not, I'm not saying that one is mutually exclusive of the other. I'm saying do both. I'm fine with it, but don't sit here and talk about it right now because you're too far away. Yes, we're coming up with a plan if this doesn't happen, but if you're going to sit here and say right now, oh, I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Where you, where's your empirical evidence? What are you basing this on other than talking to whomever you're talking to? That's my point. But that's the exact question that everybody's being asked right now. That's what the athletic directors and coaches are being asked. Do you have a plan in place? Are you thinking about contingencies or options or way to proceed from here? So it's kind of hard to avoid the question at this point. Ask the question and sit there and say, yeah, we're coming up with a plan. But, but that- don't sit here and say... Yeah. But we're not. Gonna, but you're not going to sit here and say we're not going to have college football. I mean, that's the thing that, that that Herb Street is leaning toward right now. I'm saying that have the plan, come up with the plan, come up with contingencies, but don't sit here and say right now that I'm not looking. You know, I'm not thinking we're going to have college football. No, like I said, I'm looking at it as two separate things. No, but that's Kirk Herb Street saying that. If you ask the coaches and you look at the interviews that we've seen over the past week or so with said coaches, none of them are saying that they're not thinking about it or considering potential options, but they're not saying, oh, it's definitely going to happen. That's my point. But you have someone like Kirk Herbstreet who's already sitting there and leaning in that direction. Wilkie, I've been yelling at Phil for the last seven minutes. (laughs) Sorry, I missed it. And I'm telling him he's saying he's contradicting what he's saying because he's saying what I'm saying is right. But it, it's he's saying that I'm it's too early for me to say that or for the coaches or for anybody else to say it, even though it's something they should be doing. Well, I, I again, I think it's way too early uh, and you're really I, I don't like the fact they're messing with with people that are hurting right now that need a sense of normalcy that, that, that need something to look forward to, uh, because there's no, there's not good. There was no NCAA tournament. There's baseball season. We should have had opening day on Thursday. Um, uh, that we don't know if we're going to have baseball until July. Uh, we don't know where it's going to be played. Um, you don't know we've, about the, we've N- got the no NBA, NBA playoffs. You don't know yeah, about we the don't NHL, have, no professional the, sports. The, going the Stanley on. cup. Uh, we, we're not going to get the Masters. We're not going to get the PGA, uh, the U.S. Open. All these things that we look forward to are, are going away. And now, really, college football is it that can start on time, uh, can start with a crowd. Can can I, I just think now you're messing with something that is very passionate for people as well. And when's enough enough? I mean, we may not have a college football season. That's one thing. Do we have to start mentioning it now? Can we just keep it behind closed doors? Can, can we just can can the powers that be just keep it to themselves behind closed doors? Let us speculate, but let us look forward to it too. Why kill it now? Why do you have to go out in public and 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 kill uh, something like that right off the right off the bat? Here we are in March. Um, I, that, I think that's my point. Same thing I said to John. We've all three been on the on the reporter end of this. And since there's nothing really to report on other than a, an occasional transfer portal or recruiting news no, or note, when a reporter comes and quite a few reporters are coming and asking athletic directors and coaches about making a plan, what do you answer? Do you say, no, we're not doing it? No, but I would sit there and say that there's there's a place and a time for. But they're answering honestly. Answer honestly and sit here and say, we're coming up with a plan just in case. That, that's, that's what I, it's like. That's, that's what that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Just yeah, in I'm, case. But then, you, but then when you have someone like Kirk Herbstreet come out and say, I don't know. 
He's like, not a coach and he's not an athletic director. He has nobody to be beholden to other than ESPN. And this segment of the show, apparently. <laughs> I mean, as an athletic director. No, I, I, I feel you. I feel you, John. I feel you in that. I mean, come on. Do you really need that many eyeballs on your on your uh, mid-afternoon cable show or, or whatever uh, to make bold statements like that? I mean, come on. People are hurting right now. They need some kind of normalcy, some kind, something to look forward to. Right now, college football is it. And you've got these uh, analysts and, uh, who make money just basically um, – analyzing college football and, and being, being the, the face of something. And, and now you want to throw a wet blanket on, on somebody that just lost their job at a, at a, uh, at a, um, a third shift factory who lives for college. But if, yes. but if you are, do we person- really need to do this? Do we, can we just stay behind closed doors? All, all these great events, sports is flatlined right now. And, yeah, it needs to be flatlined a little bit right now, but come on. There's going to be a point where we're back into, we got to get back into some kind of normalcy. And I can tell John it's ticked you off too. It's just, but I keep uh, saying the same thing over and over again as if you're an athletic director overseeing an eight digit. Keep it behind closed doors. Don't bring it out into the public, Phil. But if you're, what do you? But what do you say when you are asked by ten reporters, all calling to say, "Have you been discussing your options, thinking about things that you could do here in the future? The potential exists. You may not have college football. What would you do?" One soundbite, fifteen seconds. Yes, we are. We're thinking about it. I'm talking to fellow administrators in our, in our conference. We're formulating a plan. We'll get but, there when we get there. But you're telling me that they shouldn't be saying that, but then you're saying they should. No, that, I'm saying I'm no. What I'm saying is come up with a plan, address it in that one soundbite, but don't sit there and they're not belaboring it. But Kirk Herb Street is by going to this absolute negative. And talking about something like this, Clay Travis, the same thing, going to the absolute negative uh, scenario and all of this when we're not there yet. But that's my. Twitter. But they did that on Twitter, which is what people do on Twitter. And that's they, another. That's another point entirely. I'm talking about the real world. Twitter is not the real world, despite what news organizations sometimes tell you. People say stuff on Twitter that is has no connection to real life whatsoever at times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. They have a tendency to think, say things that on the Twitter that aren't t- attached to real life. No. It's the same thing. The point that I keep trying to make over and over again, if I run a business... If I run a Home Depot or a Coca-Cola or somebody like that, I'm derelict in my duty if I don't sit there and come up with a contingency plan in the event that things X, Y, or Z happens. 100% agree. And you may not have to admit it publicly if you're a publicly traded company that you're doing it. You can just say it to your shareholders and word may or may not get out. But if you're an athletic director and um, Andy Staples from The Athletic or Dennis Dodd from CBS Sports come up to you and say, hey, have you guys discussed your options, what you could, where you, how you're going to proceed from here? You have to answer. You, you, you're obligated to answer. Not saying they shouldn't answer. And I feel you're like not. I'm talking in double uh, negatives. Go for it, Wilkie. I don't I'm, think I'm you do yelling. have an obligation. I no, I don't think you have an obligation to answer. Just no comment or just come up with a standard stock and answer. But I don't believe that you have um, – they don't have the obligation. I mean, we're, we're in different times right now. Reporters are going to have to understand that. But I've been out of the game for a little while, so there you go. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I just think we're in special times right now. And yeah, I'm, I'm really ticked off about how that has been handled. 
I can feel passion with you too, John. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, why come out just people are hanging your opinion and you make an, a statement like that. I just, I don't get it. See, he got, he got so riled up. He had to switch his headphones around. That's right. That's right. That's right. And maybe I am erring on the side of being the curious journalist, but. Oh, I, I am too. I'm just, I'm just, I, I'm looking at it from the journalistic point of view. And at the same time, knowing in the landscape, what a, we're going to be getting as a soundbite and be what probably we should be getting as sound bites these days. I look, I'm all for transparency. I'm all for honesty at the and same, I'm at the same time. I know that what you can do, and the three of us know this, that what you can do is you can trample out a fire with a simple 20-second soundbite. And that's what I think these athletic administrators can do in this particular situation. Yes, we've heard what Coach Mac Brown and what Kirk Herbstreet uh, have been saying about the particular landscape in the 2020 college football season. We are formulating a plan. And we're developing it as we go in this ever-changing atmosphere. That should be the soundbite or something close to it. And I, <laughs> I keep repeating myself, but that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to know. And I think there are more people that want to know at least that their sport or their business or whatever their investment might be to be able to know that there any of those organizations are at least contemplating their options here as we move forward, because to wake up all of a sudden, we all know how fast time moves. Mm -hmm. We could go to sleep tonight and wake up. It'll be the middle of June. It's evidenced by our hairlines. Yes. We know how quickly time moves. Um, and it's a lot easier to sit there and throw around hypotheticals. Now, than it is to do this and have this same exact conversation in mid to late June. Because at least at that point, you've talked out all the possibilities and you know what might work best for you in the event that that scenario comes up. And that's really what I'm getting at. I see, I see zero issue with having conversations the second that this, the, the pandemic started, because you have to think six, eight, 10 months down the line, if you're a big business, yes, I, I, un I understand those discussions. At the same time, though, we know they're going to be changing discussions. They're going to be ever mutable because we don't know what the situation is going to be. But at the same time, I think that, NC, that uh, NCAA athletics directors conferences and the NCAA itself, regardless of division, because if you go further down into the GO5, the D2 and the D3s, They've taken major league hits when it comes to their revenue. They have to look out for their bottom lines here. And, and any in any business, any business has to project out six, eight, 10, 12 months down the line. So I, I understand that notion. And you can go ahead and interrupt me. I know that you're waving frantically like a third base coach. Treat it like a big business because that's what you are. And just sit there and look. I'm satisfied with sitting there saying, look, we're working on a plan. The plan can change. Boom. Done. No, you don't have to drop any kind of doomsday scenarios like Kirk Herbstreet's doing. Just look. Just tell me you got a plan. Fine. Great. Conversation's simple, over. Simplest answer so far that I've seen from Kyle Whittingham of Utah when he was asked about it by The Athletic. I think that there's absolutely a possibility, as much as I hate to say it. That's your quote. And that's why we're talking about it now. That's why I wanted to bring it up now and have this as a topic of conversation in the show, because we are every day that this continues, the waters get deeper. Yeah. And nobody really knows exactly where that boat is heading. No. But and so many, so many things that have kind of branched off in terms of how this is all playing out right now that have impacted college basketball, baseball, um, golf, tennis, yeah. um, at every level. College students can't even go on campus right now. No. Uh, most of them, in most states, the campuses are closed. Yep. They're doing distance learning. And one of the things I want to talk about here after we have the break is 
how the NCAA is handling it because they're not even really sure how to proceed at this point in time. And it's created confusion amongst the schools in terms of how they deal with the athletes that they still have to interact with, be it remotely, be it by text, phone call, Skype call, Zoom call, or any other social media form. And when we come back here in a little over a minute, guys, I want to talk about that. And I want to talk about how the NCAA is applying their rules to the current world we live in as athletes want to do things to help their communities, particularly a case that happened recently with uh, Clemson quarterback Trevor Lawrence. That and more when we pick up the review, the conversation in the review, coming up in just a little over a minute. We know that every driver is different, and a one-size policy does not fit all. That's why Country Financial offers a variety of discounts, so you get the coverage you need and the savings you deserve. From good driver to good student, multi-policy to multi-car, we've got a discount to suit every driver. Call Jason Wright at 678-568-6871 today to see what you could save. On Facebook at Jason Wright Agency, or by phone at 678-568-6871. Discounts vary by state. Policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Preferred Insurance Company, or Country Casualty Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, contact my friend Steve Apolinski of Apolinski and Associates. He's been representing individuals for over 30 years throughout Georgia and Alabama. Email him at steve at aa-legal.com or call him 24-7 at 404-377-9191. The initial consultation is free. I want to be good. Good. Very good. (laughs) Thanks for sticking around, everybody. You are listening to the review on the OSG Sports Podcasting Network. And guys, we are talking about the possibility of there not being big time sports. Not today, not tomorrow, not next week. But we're talking about a couple of months out. One of the things we were talking about off camera before we got started here in the block is there's a lot of money at stake when it comes to college football playing their games. And it's not just college football, but the college football also doesn't have the flexibility of, say, an NCAA or an NCAA, an NBA or even Major League Baseball. How do you handle that? Because if they don't play college football, there's a lot of money that could be instead of going from the TV networks to the to the schools coming in reverse from the schools back to the networks. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the conference networks out there, they got no events to show. Um, you're talking about a sport in football that funds a lot of these non-rev sports. And so if and I don't know what kind of insurance policies these schools and conferences have. Yep. Uh, I, I, I'm just guessing here. Uh, I, I don't think it's as adequate as it should be because these kind of doomsday scenarios have never happened before or, or anticipated. But, yeah, they're, they've got to do something to play the games and get the checks to flow in because if you cancel a college football season – I don't know how many athletic programs can survive past that point. Uh, You're going to see schools dropping sports uh, and sadly probably more male sports than female sports um, after that fact. I mean, it's going to devastate, especially in the group of five, the one double A and the D2, D3 level. I mean, Uh, now, the D2, D3 level doesn't get the kind of money, but they do get some kind of support. And all that's going to be gone because of football not being played. So this is why, as we talked about in the first segment, about Kurt Herbstreet and Mac Brown and all those guys speculating about no college football season, just be quiet. There's so much at stake right now, what, and it's in March. Just don't go there right now. Uh yeah. You know, and looking at the numbers that uh, because of March Madness, the NCAA has had to tap into their emergency fund to the tune of $50 million. And it was, I think it's a $270 million payout now 
to schools and you're looking at in D1, D2, and D3, you're looking at the very least at a 50, if not 60% decrease in revenue distribution to the schools. And to Wilkie's point, you know, you have these institutions in, in FCS and, and D2 and D3 and the NAIA that are profoundly reliant on those funds. And the, to see the NCAA, the, the NCAA come to this point of the road financially, uh, this is another part of that equation going forward. You know, John, I'm, it just popped in my head. I'm thinking about the city of Omaha, Nebraska right now, which tons of their revenue comes from the College World Series. There's not going to be one this year. And so for a week, was it two and a half weeks? Yeah. Uh, those hotel rooms are going to go empty. Those restaurants are going to be half full or a third full. Uh, all those, uh, all that, was it late July uh, when the college baseball world embarks on Omaha, Nebraska? They're not coming this year. And so that city is going to have a huge budget shortfall because of the tourism that won't be coming. Mm-hmm. And you're talking about how many, 14, 15 dates uh, at TD Ameritrade that is packed. Uh, so, you know, this is going to really hurt Omaha, Nebraska not having that huge event coming in uh, that come, you know, that's there yearly. And when you think about the city that we we're, we're, uh, originate from, Atlanta, Georgia, due to host the Final Four this week, and that's not going to happen now. And so that, that's going to be a huge shortfall for, uh, for the city of Atlanta that's anticipating a um, ton of college basketball fans that, that, to come to uh, Mercedes-Benz and, uh, and watch the Final Four and all the activities behind it. So it's more than just schools and, and at each level. I mean, it's cities that host these big events, uh, and they're going to be suffering. Uh, now, just think if there's no college football season. Well, I, I guess really the bowl games that, that are the group of six are the ones going to be suffering. I, I think it would eliminate pretty much the, the, uh, the other bowl games that ESPN support because – I don't know if they can take a one year hit like that. Um, and then the college football playoff too. I mean, I forget who's hosting it in 2021, but they'll, they'll take a huge hit. Um, so uh, you're talking dev- to me, it's, it will be devastating to college sports, not necessarily to the major colleges. I think it will be a huge problem for them, but as yeah. you go down the food chain, it's really going to be devastating. You're talking with a lot of the Power Five programs. You're talking about schools that have made big investments in building their multi-million dollar athletic facilities for their teams or super mega stadium expansions, all of which are going to have to be put on hold. I mean, in a separate conversation on a separate show, we could go off about the whacked out economics of college football, yeah. but I'm not going to get into that here. But all that's got to be put into consideration. Speaking of raising money, a little note that came out from the NCAA this week when um, Clemson initially self-reported quarterback, star quarterback Trevor Lawrence and his girlfriend for trying to do a fundraiser to help raise some money for people impacted by the loss of jobs, income, and this, that, and the other because they're locked up at home due to self-quarantines from the COVID disease. Yep. Is it as mind-boggling to the two of you as it is to me that the NCAA even has a rule in place that players can't participate in fundraising fundraising activities to worthy charities? I assume that falls under the rhetorical question category of the show, considering that initially before it was shuttered by uh, Clemson's compliance department, uh, Marissa Mowry and Trevor Lawrence had come up with uh, near $3,000 to Meals on Wheels and to No Kid Hungry for uh, Northwest Georgia and for the the Seneca region in Absolutely. South Carolina. Yeah, and so Clemson's compliance shuts it down. Then uh, the NCAA works with Clemson. They bring it back up, and so there is a, a, link, a click and a GoFundMe uh, that still exists. But yeah, the, the rhetorical question portion of the program for me doesn't surprise me one bit, Wilkie. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me either. Um, 
I mean, come on. I, I understand that he's a name. He, he he's a household name. He's he's a face of Clemson football. Um, all the things that in this, the NCAA just hates uh, when somebody is is head and shoulders out in front of everybody else. A great athlete, great quarterback, uh, able to use some of his fame to for a great cause. That should not be an issue at all. And uh, it was, they took the heat for it. They wrote a very poorly written response to it. And I'm not surprised that uh, this, this, I mean, come on, you've, you've got to have some kind of common sense. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about the NCAA. <laughs> <laughs> it's half the reason that we've got this whole name, image, and likeness, likeness uh, yes. battle going on right now. Because I think, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this falls under that category due to the fact that he's using his name and his image yeah. to help raise money for a good cause. Yeah, I mean, where do you you've got to draw that line somewhere? And it's just mind-boggling to me that I, even after all of these years and the fact that we're so advanced in so many ways, that it's never dawned on the NCAA that hey maybe it's not a good idea to keep the athletes from doing things that are for at least for worthy cause, and yet that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Here's Insanity. from the sanity. Here's from the release from the release itself, quoting, and this is quoting from Trevor. We believe as Christians, it's our responsibility to love and serve those around us, especially through this pandemic. We appreciate any and all efforts from you all. Every dollar makes a difference. Then Marissa. The needs will change over time, but we will work with trusted local charities to serve the communities we both love. Right now, we expect to assist families as they struggle with some pretty basic needs. It hits every ideal that the NCAA is or should be standing for. But we're going to yell at our quarterback and the university is going to shut it down before the university and the NCAA bring it back online. It forces folks to go back in and re-gift and redirect and re-donate. Yeah, I'm shocked. It's mind-boggling to me that this is even a topic of conversation. Sadly, it's not for me. (laughs) Now, Texas quarterback Sam Ellinger is doing the same thing, and he got permission from Twitter, or Twitter, (laughs) from (laughs) the NCAA. (laughs) Maybe Twitter gave him uh, permission. This is where I got it from, by the way, my source. uh, So take it for what you want. Uh, but uh, Texas Compliance and the NCAA approved it. <laughs> I don't know if Sam Ellinger went through the proper channels or, and Trevor Lawrence didn't. I tend to think Trevor Lawrence did go through the proper channels. He was just the one that they had to set the example for. Uh, but or probably has a bigger name than Sam Ellinger. I don't know. I, who knows these things? But um, uh, he, he's doing the same thing. He didn't catch the flack that, that Trevor Lawrence did from the NCAA. I, I don't know. But, I mean, that's it, it's all silly to me. Come on. Uh, <laughs> man, I tell you, the NCAA cannot – stand good pr let's just let's just call a horse a horse boys and girls clubs of america central texas food bank austin pets alive and more sam ellinger has a gofundme page if you're interested in that sixteen thousand dollars raised in the first two days that's impressive million well dollar goal Mr. ellinger uh total respect for him for doing that love that lauren trevor lawrence and his girlfriend are doing it i think that's all what sport and what teaching athletes how to grow up and give back to their community. I think this is the perfect example of what it's all about. They are doing the right things. Yep. Guys, anything else you want to talk about on this, on the quarantine COVID related subjects here while we're on the, on the topic today? Well, we are practicing good social distancing. Yes. Yeah, um, give ourselves props for that. Yes. Uh, the SEC is going to begin allowing virtual instruction this week. Uh, this comes from uh, Auburn Undercover. A uh, memo sent to SEC athletic departments. New policy goes into effect tomorrow as we're taping Monday, March 30. Coaching staff uh, members are allowed to provide technical or tactical instruction, in quotes, to players. Strength and conditioning coaches may still provide players with specific workouts to do on their own, but no coaches may observe the players while working out. Uh, Oklahoma head coach Lincoln Riley quoted in a radio interview having a concern about the Big 12 not allowing coaches to make use of their virtual options the way that ACC coaches already have in the SEC is looking to do starting Monday. 
<laughs> another mystifyingly stupid rule that makes absolutely no sense in the current world that we live in. I mean, I guess I get it if we're living in the 1970s and video conferencing technology does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> but it has, and it has for, what, 20 years now? Yes. <laughs> if not longer? Yes. In, why not let coaches interact with the players uh, in the a virtual way similar to what they'd be doing if they were on campus at this point in time. What's the issue there? Wilkie? <laughs> Sorry, I was reading something. <laughs> I just, I just picked, uh, I was reading this article about Lincoln Riley and in, in Oklahoma and, you know, the, um, different guidelines between power five conferences over uh, quarantine uh, over um, you know, whether you can do video conferencing like this and, and uh, virtual reality with the uh, uh, with, with the uh, instructions and so forth. So uh, it's, you know, it seems like that uh, one conference has a, has a set of rules while the other one doesn't and it's not uniform. And there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of confusion. Let's put it that way. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, just play I'm the damn season. Color me shocked. I'm sensing a theme here when it comes to the discussion about how things are proceeding and um, where we are in the year counter. Um, it seems as though the conferences and the NCA and the rules and the regulations and things, the ways of doing business are being run like they pretty much like they were 50 years ago. Even though the world's changed, so has technology and so has the way that people interact with each other. But yet the NCA is still trying to enforce archaic rules that are relatively outdated in this day and age. So are we at that point where we need the benevolent underlord of each sport, a commissioner, a president, a... Grand Poobah. Uh, is it time that we do that? Especially with football and men's co- men's and women's college basketball. Um, the three, I guess, and, and college, I don't even throw in college baseball too because it's gotten huge. Um, do those sports that have some kind of, of TV juice, uh, do they need a Grand Poobah? I'm throwing it out there, guys. Yes, they do. A, I've seen discussion from time to time that there needs to be some sort of consistent oversight, a commissioner, if you will, like the professional sports league ha- leagues have. Maybe you don't title it commissioner since it's technically over educational author- uh, institutions, if you want to be that austere about it. But yeah, that time has come. Actually, that time probably came about five or ten years ago. Uh, before that. <laughs> <laughs> when when TV started to dictate scheduling and financing and putting money in folks' pockets. Yeah, there has to be a final voice or at least a unified voice. To I'm telling you, the conference commissioners and the presidents will not let this happen. No. They like the power. They like their own fiefdoms and being in charge of them. Yeah, and they like, to be, they like the ability to make their own money and not have it regulated by anybody else. I get that. Doesn't mean it's right. But that's also why we have such inequality and and disparity in the levels of sports programs that we have in college football and archaic rules like the ones we just talked about a little while ago. Guys, we have talked for a good bit of time here on this. Yeah. Uh, On your board? Not at all. (laughs) We could talk about this all day long. We'll save it for next week. When are we going to start talking about games, players, and. Well, we're not. I guess spring football's out of the question now, and yeah, we've, got, <laughs> we've got a lot of time between now and August. August. Are we going to get a talking season this year? Oh yeah, I'm sure it will be. It will be shoehorned in there for the sake of television. Trust me. Yeah, they got to give them their preseason opportunities. Um, but I mean, we've got things we can talk about over as we go, and hopefully, folks, you'll be able to contribute to this conversation and tell us what you think. I mean, we've got plenty of conferences. We can look at where they were last year. We can look at where teams were last year. 
and where they are going forward. We've got the time to take to look into it. And then we've got single topic issues like this and that what we talked about last week that come up as well. So, I mean, the format's open. Um, we're op definitely open to suggestion, thoughts, recommendations, and or ideas. If there's a topic relating to college football that you think we should be talking about or something that you think that might be interesting, let us know. Uh, you can find us at OSG Sports, both on Facebook and Twitter. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. YouTube channel. I... YouTube. Yeah, I ran, ran that word together for some reason. Also at OSG Sports. Uh, you can find him at Jay Wilkerson 16. You can find Brother Nelson here at OSG Nelson. And you can find me at OSG Phil. We're all, we got plenty of time on our hands here. So reach out, let us know what you think. Guys, anything before I wrap it up? I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get a refill on my liquid, considering how much uh, talking we did this week, and uh, we're gonna need to refuel and, and uh, regroup because it was. Uh, let's just say the the word I think the word of the week was spirited. <laughs> Any last words, brother Wilkie? No, I agree with John. It was a very spirited discussion uh, this week, and looking forward to much more uh, next week. That's right. Coming up next week when we return with a new episode of The Review. We are the OSG Sports Team, the Online Sports Guys. You can find us at theonlinesportsguys.com. And make sure you download the phone apps. There, It is free. That phone app can be found on the, in the Apple Store, and it can be found in Google Play. Until then, for Brother Wilkie and for Brother John, I am Brother Phil. We are the OSG Sports Team. Signing off for another week. You have been listening to an episode of The Review on the OSG Sports Podcasting Network. <laughs>